Not too long ago having fast hard drives in the PC was very complicated for many gamers. The fastest drives were very expensive, and on paper, they didn't seem to provide much extra performance either, seeing as they cost five times as much for the same amount of storage. Fortunately, we live in a radically different context right now, and we have storage units that are 50 times faster at very competitive prices. So why do I say that your PC is slow? Is it possible to do it fast with little money? It is important that you watch this video, as you will find out how much the chosen storage affects the overall performance of your PC. The results are sure to surprise you. We'll be comparing everything from old-fashioned HDD hard drives to the latest generation M.2 NVMe Gen 4 SSDs. I hope this video is what you were looking for, and I wanted to emphasize that it has been possible thanks to your support. If you want to see more videos like this on the channel, it is vitally important that you subscribe, since the vast majority who watch the videos are not subscribed, and bringing relevant content is complicated if our community does not grow in numbers. See also the description to follow us on the other networks, such as TikTok or Instagram, and above all, add our Amazon and Components affiliate links to your bookmarks. That way, despite paying the same price for your online purchases, you will be contributing directly to this channel. Storage is one of the main keys in a PC, since files are becoming heavier and heavier and users require greater immediacy to access and process them. In the market there are several types of hard disks, and obviously they are more expensive the more space and higher speeds they offer. The first type would be HDD hard disks, which are the cheapest mechanical disks. It would be the type of storage that would cost the least per gigabyte of space. These disks usually spin at 7200 RPM in the fastest models, although there are also some SSHD versions that we will not consider in this video, because they are not too common. In the most common models we can expect read and write speeds of around 100 to 150 MB slash S, although later in the video you will see the actual results we can obtain. On top of that we have the solid state hard disks or SSDs. Here there are so many variants and generations that it is a real mess. We are going to distinguish several subcategories for your better understanding. We can separate them first by the type of connection. We have the external SSD, which are connected via USB and are completely portable, like a pen drive. Then there are the SATA SSDs, which require two SATA cables to connect, one for data transfer that goes to the board and another for power that goes to the power supply. These SSDs are usually around 500 MB slash S read and write, so on paper they are already about three to four times faster than an HDD hard disk. Again, we will see performance comparisons in real use later. Finally, we have the M.2 SSDs, which are the ones that go directly on the board, without cables or complications. They are also the smallest. Here we have many variants, and we already have two different types depending on the interface used. M.2 SATA SSDs usually use the SATA interface, as in the previous group of SSDs, and their speeds are also usually around 500 MB slash S, since the SATA interface itself has a limitation of 6 Gbps. Then there are M.2 NVMe SSDs, which are the good ones. They use the NVMe protocol and take advantage of the PCI Express lanes on the board, which are much, much faster. A single Pikla Express line of the latest generation, the 4.0, reaches 2000 MB S, so it is four times faster than the SATA interface. But be careful, because the ports on which these hard disks go usually have four PCI Express lines, so theoretically a four-line M.2 Gen 4 port would be almost 8000 MB S as bandwidth. This already exceeds more than 10 times the maximum bandwidth that can offer any type of SATA SSD. Compared to HDDs, we are talking about an increase of between 5000 and 8000%. The PCI Express 5.0 interface is already on the market, and we already have some platforms that support it, so we are on the verge of a new generation of even faster and more expensive SSDs. In this case, there's talk of NVMe Gen 5 hard drives that will reach 13,000 MB slash S, a real barbarity. Currently the fastest NVMe SSDs make use of PCI Express 4.0 interface, so they are called Gen 4. These are beastly, 
but they are also quite expensive. Gen 3 NVMe SSDs are the best value for money and make use of PCI Express 3.0. In this case, the bandwidth would be half that of the Gen 4 lines, remaining, as we will see later, at a more than respectable theoretical peak of about 4000 MB S. If you've reached this point, I hope you're liking the video. And if so, I would greatly appreciate your subscription. You don't know how much it helps us, and it costs you nothing. I have been repeating for years that it is essential to have an SSD in your PC, whatever your budget is, even if you have 400 euros. But why do I say this? On what basis do I insist so much? Well, let's see it with real tests, and not just data on paper. We will compare a conventional HDD, a SATA SSD, a Gen 3 NVMe SSD, and a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, the fastest on the market today. Let's see what the differences are. First we are going to run the Crystal Disk Mark benchmark, which measures the read and write speed of hard disks. With this we can see what real transfer speed the disks have, and if it corresponds to the theoretical one advertised by the manufacturers. The HDD hard disk is the first one we analyzed. It is a classic Seagate Barracuda 1TB at 7200 RPM. These HDDs do not usually advertise fixed read and write speeds, and the values we can expect should range from around 80 to around 160 MB S. The tested unit has obtained somewhat poor results, reaching 79 MB S read, and 67 MB S write speed. This could be due to the fact that the drive is quite full at the moment. An emptier drive would probably be giving better results of around 150 MB S or so. As an example, we have the same benchmark, but as you can see in this case the hard disk would be completely empty and would be around 180 to 200 MB slash S read and write. We can say that how full the disk is affects its performance quite a lot. We will see if this is still the case for the rest of the disks. The first of the SSDs is a Betaton SATA SSD with 1TB capacity. It advertises read and write speeds reaching 550 and 530 MB slash S respectively. We see how in the tests this cheap SSD of unknown brand Elega to exceed the advertised read speeds, reaching 563 MB slash S, while in the write speeds is not very far, staying at 516 MB slash S. The Gen 3 NVMe SSD tested is the Samsung's 970 EVO from SOOGB. This would be an M.2 SSD with PCI Express 3.0 interface. The advertised speeds are already clearly higher than a SATA SSD. Samsung advertises 3500 MB S as read speed, and 2500 MB S as write speed. In the tests performed these values have been quite respected, reaching 3487 MB S in reading, and 2284 MB S in writing. Slightly less than advertised, but still super fast. The latest SSD tested is the Adata XPG S71TB. This supersonic beast advertises maximum read speeds of 7400 MB S and write speeds of 6400 MB S. This is out of this world. The tests performed also verify this data, as we have achieved an amazing 7466 MB S read and 6459 MB S write. In both cases we exceeded the numbers announced by the manufacturer. As a second test, we have something more practical. Obviously, unlike the previous test, where a higher number implies higher performance, in this case we want the time to be as low as possible. As soon as we start the test we see how the boot with an NVMe Gen 4 SSD is practically instantaneous, and we have Windows fully operational in a few seconds. This time is somewhat longer, because the login is automated, and the PC has many peripherals connected. It is more than possible to have times of less than 10 seconds. The difference with a Gen 3 NVMe SSD is actually very small. In the end it comes down to small details, and the startup configuration you have in Windows can alter this difference. The fewer programs that start automatically, for example, the faster the startup is going to be. The SATA SSD also behaves very well, and if you have configured a fast boot, without Windows asking for credentials and no program starts automatically, the truth is that the times will remain very top. 
I think we could all stand these extra seconds at startup. Finally, let's go to the HDD. Here the problems begin, as the differences in seconds are much larger. The system feels noticeably slower, and this is noticeable from the very start of Windows. This is also why we say that an SSD, whatever the type, is a must. Between the different SSDs there are differences, but the fact of having an SSD, even a SATA SSD, already gives us enough speed to have a sufficiently fluid system at least. Game Load Another key would be the loading of programs and games, as this is another situation where the differences between the different types of disks are clearly noticeable. In this case, the test we are going to do in Fortnite. We have the Epic Store open, and from there we start Fortnite to calculate the time until it loads. The results are not surprising either, and we once again see an order that remains within logic, positioning each unit where it should be. Again, the HDD is the one that gives more feeling of blocking and slowness, therefore, it would be interesting to have an SSD on which to install also your most used games and programs. And if you can, just using SSDs as storage drives in your PC would be the bomb. After these tests, it is clear that the exaggerated differences we saw on paper do not translate to actual performance either. The NVMe Gen 4 SSD is the fastest, but the vast majority of users will have enough with a Gen 3 or even a SATA SSD. But what is the best value for money and which one should you buy? I think that at this point HDDs are absolutely ruled out for 95% of those who are watching the video, since a 1TB SATA SSD is already costing around 50 euros, which is an amazing price, considering that a 1TB HDD costs about 40 euros, being considerably more slow. And watch out, because many 1TB NVMe Gen 3 SSDs, which as you have seen perform spectacularly well, are already around 60 euros. Honestly, these NVMe drives seem to me to be the best value for money. They are the fastest and most comfortable, as they go directly on the board, without cables that get in the way or give problems. I could not recommend this option more. Gen 4 or Gen 5 NVMe SSDs are faster, yes, but that difference isn't quite justified by the price increase for the vast majority of users. Future technologies such as direct storage, which seeks to enable direct access from the CPU to the hard disk without having to go through RAM, may require these supersonic speeds, which may then change the usefulness and extra performance provided by this type of unit. With this I remind you that it is very important that you leave a like, as well as a comment saying what you thought of the video, and the type of storage you have on your PC. Are you going to upgrade your hard drive after watching this video? Leave it in a comment! To not miss more videos, you can also subscribe to the channel by activating the little bell. See you in future videos, see you next time, bye!